super easy, barely an inconvenience. Hey everybody, Dave here. How are y'all doing tonight? Syndicated Pipe Club once again. Now, what you don't realize is, and you will in a minute, that I don't have any housekeeping because, well, this is pre-recorded a while ago, maybe. I don't know. Like, at least one of us has gone having a kid or, you know, dealing with a kid or it's been impossible. It's a bonus episode. Yay! And here to help me with it tonight is Greg. As soon as I get everything back in there okay how you doing tonight greg i'm doing well how about you one of these days i'll make these transitions smoother maybe i have by now i don't know we're recording this early right <laughs> yeah no i'm uh i'm doing well nothing uh nothing has changed too much since we uh recorded the last episode or has it da, da, da. <laughs> Seriously, no, guys, we, we really don't know. There could be a thousand listeners right now or a thousand viewers on YouTube. <laughs> Maybe we hit the million million viewer mark and we're getting the plaque from YouTube that would be great to be able to get 100,000 viewers or a million viewers or 2 million viewers or yes. 15 thank million viewers. Yes, thank you for giving us more subscribers than PewDiePie. That would be great. <laughs> I seriously doubt it, but that would be great. Hooty Throne PewDiePie, some pipe and tobacco channel that talks about TV shows. Ah, yeah, they would write so many hit pieces about us. <laughs> it, would be, it would it would be ugly. You cheated. No, we did not. The pipe community just rallied behind us and the entire pipe world, all of it. Yes. All millions of us. Meet the two men that are trying to corrupt your children. No, we are not trying to corrupt your children. If your children are watching this, they're doing it without you. And certainly without our permission, because I set these things to 18 plus when I remember. Yes. Ah. Uh. So, being a bonus episode, this one's going to be focused pipes and tobacco mostly, if not only. And today we're talking about our top three favorite pipe shapes. Yes. But before we do that, what are you smoking? Well, tonight I'm smoking a blend that I came up with. It's hybrid blend, so I didn't do too much in the way of blending, just mixed two tobaccos together. Wrote it down in my little book which I got from the, the now defunct um, Tin Society. It is called Ghost of the Black Bayou. It's 50% Haunted Bookshop and 50% FNK's Black Bayou Mist. Now, you probably, probably, if you're listening and or watching, you want to know what that's all about. I've got my laptop off screen over here and uh, I've got all that information for you. So, if you're not in the know, Haunted Bookshop is a burly Virginia blend with a touch of Perique. And FNK's Black Bayou Mist is a, according to smokingpipes.com, full-bodied Latakia blend made in the traditional way, although they don't really specify what the traditional way is, so use your imagination. With the best Virginia's the finest Orientals, some dark, 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 dark fired Kentucky, and a good pinch of Louisiana Perique. So Perique in both blends. Didn't notice know that when I mixed them together. I just know I tried Haunted Bookshop and didn't like it. Yes, I said it. Pipe community is now in an uproar. And uh, a good amount of the Latakia mentioned earlier. So... Yeah. When it comes down to it, it's kind of a English blend with some burley mixed into it. Yeah, I had a feeling that there was going to be some freak in the Black Bayou Mist uh, from the 
referencing of uh, the bayou. Well, and, yeah. Uh, which, yeah. And which uh, pipe is that? This is my Carrie Dublin. Would that be EA Carrie? It would. Uh, Modi will uh, appreciate that. Yes. If you're watching, Modi, this one's for you. <laughs> Next time I'll smoke my apple. What about you, Greg? I noticed you're smoking a pipe that I also have. Yes, this is uh, the Cobbett Shire, uh, which I picked up at the Missouri Meerschaum factory in my visit last year around nice. uh, Thanksgiving. And uh, I picked it up specifically because I knew how much you liked it and uh, wanted to give it a chance. I'm uh, not usually much of a church warden guy, even though I like uh, longer pipes. Um, and so like this one, I haven't smoked as much as some of my other ones, like uh, the Emerald that I picked up. Um, but you know what? I, uh, I do like it. I do. Uh, I do enjoy it. Yeah. I and, picked up. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I picked mine up, uh, based solely on, uh, something that, uh, John David Cole had said on country squire radio about this being the, um, in his mind, the corn cob version of the Bing's favorite, which is one of his favorite pipes. So, that was a good enough recommendation for me to try it. Yeah. And the blend that I'm smoking tonight is uh, Kramer's blend for Danny K. And mm. what's in that is, which, uh, you know, Danny K was an actor, uh, a Hollywood actor. Um, and this was a blend that uh, Kramer's uh, uh, pipe shop, I think in Hollywood, um, blended for. They, they blended for a couple of different actors and you can check out their website and see who they blended for. It's a interesting read, uh, just seeing who well, the type of people that would show up at their shop and have a specific uh, pipe tobacco blended for them. Uh, but in this blend, it is a, uh, I believe the base is an Irish aromatic, which I would believe would be Irish mist because that's the only one that I really know off the top of my head. Um, but it has a little bit of uh, Tariq in it and uh, a good amount of Latakia as well. So, uh, and it's a kind of a riff off of the their blend for Cary uh, Grant, but it with the added Tariq, uh, I believe, which since I like Tariq, I thought that would be more my style. Yeah, I have... Uh tried uh, at least one Kramer blend myself. Uh, it's their uh, English blend. That's what it's called. The Father Dempsey, probably? Nope, just Kramer's mm. English blend. Mm. I'll look it up. Make sure I'm right. As I don't I don't want people to say, hey, you were wrong. Yeah. I know Father Dempsey is uh, the, one of their English blends, at least. Yeah, it's definitely not Father Dempsey. I'd remember that. Which I think Father Dempsey might be their most popular blend. No, here it is. It's just English blend. That's uh, that's the one I have. It just says here it's a clean, crisp, cool smoke with just a hint of natural sweetness. Kramer's English blend was a favorite tobacco of Leonard Nimoy, Tony Curtis, Charles Bronson, and Richard M. Sherman. Now, I don't know who that is, um, but I recognize all those other names. Mm-hmm. And I decided to try this when I was looking around one time, basically because Leonard Nimoy smoked it. Yeah, no, that's a good choice then. If Spock's smoking it, it's got to be good. Mm -hmm. I noticed too that uh, for this recording, we uh, ended up switching uh, Briars and Cobbs. Yeah, I noticed that too. Um, the episode we recorded before this uh, was our episode on um, The Mandalorian Episode 3, which went out on the... really got to stop hitting the one that's going across our pictures because everybody every once in a while can see a mouse go across one of our faces. Yeah, the 16th? Uh, probably. Yes. 
Yes. Was, Which is still the future for the two of us. Yes, it is. We we uh, haven't released that episode yet. We just recorded it like 20 minutes ago, our time. Yeah. <laughs> Which I may or may not be a father by then. Hopefully not. Hopefully hopefully my son is uh, you know, sticks around for his due date. Don't worry, everybody. If uh, one of us has to go at some point, the other will just finish the episode. If it's me. If it's <laughs> me that has to go, the episode just ends suddenly right there because I had to go. I'm the one that does the recording yeah. and editing. But if Greg yeah, has to we, go, I'll finish up. <laughs> yeah, well, we will certainly record the moment when the, they find out the news if it happens during recording. It's time. Okay, got to go. Bye. Click. <laughs> yeah. So look forward to that. Take bets on it. Let us know who won. Yes. So we're talking favorite pipe shapes today. Yeah, I thought that this would be a good topic to kind of talk about as a way to get all the pipe smokers out there to kind of know us a little bit better, kind of our preferences and everything. And, you know, I always enjoy kind of uh, looking through these threads on uh, pipe message boards on uh, like favorite shapes. That's actually why I picked this particular pipe because it is the Dublin is because of this pipe, one of my favorite shapes. It might just be that, this is my favorite Dublin pipe, so that makes it my favorite shape. I don't know, but this is one of the three shapes right here. This nice Dublin, because especially this carry one, it fits nice in the hand, smokes cool. It looks cool, especially with the uh, the work that was done. I don't know how well it's come well it's coming through on camera, but all the rest. Of, I, I'm not even sure if I would call that rustication. It almost looks like bug track marks. Mm. But it's still neat. No, absolutely. Uh, hopefully we won't pick the same exact uh, shapes. Mm. I can guarantee you with at least one of them, we didn't. So, I've, I've started. Your turn. What's one of your favorites? Oh, so the Dublin? Okay. Um... So the first one that I'm going to go with is uh, I'm going to go with the Bulldog and uh, specifically the straight Bulldog, even though I do uh, enjoy, uh, I generally enjoy straight pipes or pipes with a slight bend to them. Um, I'm not as big of a fan of like the full bend pipes, although uh, some of them can look really nice, but I really just like uh, a straight Bulldog. It's, you know, a lot of the pipes the, you know the pipe family tree out there uh, a lot of pipes are simply based on the Dublin and uh, not the Dublin the, the billiard yes and uh, are just slight variations on it and what I like about the bulldog is that it's completely its own category with the diamond shank and uh, you know you have the you know the the circular, you know, circular base with uh, you know, the two double lines going around the bowl. Uh, it's just a really nice, neat looking pipe. And uh, especially as a straight version, like it just, uh, it's a very striking appearance and uh, very memorable. Uh, and I just, uh, I like them a lot, you know, whether it's a uh, rusticated or smooth. I, I even have a, uh, a Kamoi. Uh, Guildhall uh, Bulldog and it has like two scratches on it on uh, from the last person that owned it and uh, I still bought it off of eBay you know despite the, the defects on it and uh, I still really like that pipe uh, just because it's just a fantastic shape it's one that uh, you know if I go to a pipe table uh, that has a bunch of estates on there and I see a bulldog on there, I'm definitely going to give it a look. Yeah, bulldog is a good shape. I mean, I have a lot of bulldogs myself, or I've had a lot of bulldogs. I've sold a few bulldogs. 
mostly because when I was buying lots of estate pipes when I was doing some re re restorations and whatnot and trying to get a get a collection build up there's always at least one bulldog in a state in, in, in an estate collection at least one mm -hmm. so I I have had my share of bulldogs not a not a favorite pipe but certainly or a favorite not a favorite pipe shape I should say but certainly one that's worth having at least one of in your collection because it's a classic absolutely okay so now we're going to go into my next pipe shape I guess and this is what I picked I'm actually showing the pipes that I picked so this is what I picked for this one it's a church warden but it's kind of freehand but almost a pickaxe it's it's just a neat pipe and it's yeah it's like a freehand pickaxe is what I think of it as mm -hmm. but it's, it's not really quite a pickaxe it's not quite sharp enough down here at the bottom but uh, pipe shape go, the, the go this is definitely in my top top three because for two reasons because it's a neat shape and it was a gift from uh, our pipe club president that's definitely a pipe that you'll uh, take on an adventure to throw a ring into uh, mm -hmm. volcano and I have a one ring so uh, I can go to a volcano and, and I can do that of course it's my wedding ring so I don't think I should probably do that <laughs> Now, what um, what qualities of uh, the church warden you know appeal to you the most about it uh, that makes it one of your favorites? Well, it's a long pipe, that's for sure. That's what I like. I like longer pipes too. Like this one, this, this one here is just a little short. I think it should. I feel like the like, pipes this length should be a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, my my favorite, as far as length goes, is this one the one you're smoking tonight yeah that's the perfect size but for those you know for those days where you just want to make a statement that's where these come in because i think it again from country squire radio i think it's john david always says you're making a statement when you smoke a pipe but if you're smoking a church warden you're really making a statement and i think it was more on a cobs end of it but that's the general idea John David, if you're listening, I'm so sorry I butchered you. <laughs> it's more than just a statement. You're throwing an anvil around. Mm. There was a article I remember on a pipe website uh, when uh, England implemented a, a smoking ban from uh, all their pubs and taverns. Mm -hmm. There was a pipe smoker that rebelled by um, getting himself a uh, a really a six foot long church warden, and so he would uh, uh, light his pipe and then stick the bowl outside and have the bowl outside the, the door while he uh, stood inside and uh, smoked that way. So he got around from uh, having to stand outside to smoke, which. Uh, I'm not sure how it uh, how he got away with it with the you know the exhaling the smoke, but uh, apparently yeah. that was enough. Okay. Or at least he he stood by the crack of the door. But it was enough for at least uh, them to kind of be like, oh, okay, we'll give you a pass. All right. I don't, yeah, I don't know how that uh, is passable, but if you got away with it, cool. <laughs> no, absolutely. What about you? What's your next uh, next shape? The next shape, uh, this one does come from uh, the Canadian family, which uh, I debated on putting the Canadian a Canadian shape on this list. Uh, it, it's definitely in my top five, but I wanted to keep this to a top three just for uh, brevity's sake. Um, but my favorite, my, my second favorite is uh, the Love At. 
Okay. Which, uh, you know, it's uh, the smallest of the Canadian shaped pipes as it's kind of, you know, the same shape as a, a billiard pipe, but you have the, uh, you know, the kind of the saddle bit end uh, at the end of the pipe, like, uh, which would be kind of like right around here. And, uh, you know, other than that, you have like a really long shank to go with it. Mm -hmm. And with that, I just, uh, I really like the, the look of the shank. Um, you know, I, even though the, a lot of pipes are based off of the billiard, um, you know, it's just a, a classic style shape. And uh, the Love It, I think, is the most unique version of that with, with, the, with the long shank to it. And it's just a nice pipe that I always enjoy uh, smoking and... It's one that uh, I could probably, if I had to pick one pipe to collect for the rest of my life, um, the the Love It would be a uh, high contender on that list, just because it's so versatile. You know, you're, well, you're not going to find any uh, long shaped versions of it. Um, I, I mean, uh, any uh, bent shaped versions of it. But uh, I, I like straight pipes, and uh, you know, I think just I, I really like the Love It. Okay. Yeah, the Canadian family is one pipe. I was just looking at the collection while you were talking. It's one pipe that's sorely lacking in my collection. I do not have an yeah, example think, of that. Just yeah, pretty, I think we talked about that a little bit last week. You may have. Of course, you know, we don't know exactly how many weeks ago that was for you, the, the viewer or listener, depending on right. how you're consuming the content. But... It probably was. Yeah, I, I made this joke, um, I think it was Scott from Aristocob once, that the Canadian's a great pipe, but I'm a Canadian without a Canadian. I need to get a Canadian. <laughs> and you have some other options there, too, like the Lumberman and uh, the Liverpool. Both are uh, nice uh, variations of it. Yeah. But for my third option, it's this one. I have no idea what you call this. I guess it would fall into the sitter category because it does sit on the flat part. Oh, good. That was just ash. There was some white stuff on the bottom here. Um, this was made by Trepus. He's a Canadian pipe maker. Uh, no longer with us, unfortunately. And uh, this one I picked up. I've mentioned this before somewhere, maybe on Maple City. But I picked this up in Toronto at Michael Park's workshop. The Toronto Pipe Club, which are all pretty uh, pretty good friends or Michael's part of that club. I'm not exactly sure how that got together, but they seem to be pretty good friends while I was there. Um, always invited us for uh, their summer barbecue, which typically takes place at Michael Park's workshop. And uh, uh, he uh, they were they were putting a, uh, putting together a raffle and there were two or three Trepus pipes in and when I my ticket got picked this was the only one of them that was left I don't know why because I thought this thing would have been the first to go because it's so unique but uh, I was glad to see it and when it was unsmoked so I, I picked that one up so it's a uh, it's a favorite of mine, top top three, because just because of the shape. I mean, it's kind of a pot-looking bulldog-topped thing without the bulldog. Like it, it's just a combination of a bunch of stuff, but it works. It's a good-looking pipe. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um... It's kind of like the super scroll of pipes. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you're uh, if you're familiar with the scrolls, with uh, 
the Super Scroll has uh, basically the abilities of uh, all the Fantastic Four members, and, and kind of has a you know part of their power like in his look, and that's kind of like uh, either that or it's like uh, what's another geeky reference I can do like the the Chimera of uh, yeah the Chimera shapes. yeah mm -hmm. yeah. No, it's a really unique. I've never seen a pipe quite like that. I have heard of uh, Tripus pipes, though. Uh, there was one that I uh, had an eye on on eBay that I was going to bid on, but that was one of the one few that my wife has actually kind of put her foot down. I was like, no, you have enough pipes for right now. And uh, I sulked away. She couldn't find a way to say, oh, I slipped and bid on it anyway after we discussed <laughs> it. Yeah. No, I, I didn't want to test my luck with the whole um, it's better to ask forgiveness than to uh, ask permission. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, if you can if you can get a hold of a, a Trepus pipe, they're great smokers. Um, they were, you know, made for the working man. They were not, uh, from my research, not expensive pipes when they were new. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's just for 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 me. It's also one of those things. It was made here in Canada, in Toronto, like only about four hours from where I live. So it's kind of local. So it's, yeah, it's kind of cool. That's pretty awesome. So for my last pipe, um, I'm gonna go with one that you've already mentioned but i'm going to do a variation on it and uh my third favorite pipe shape is the bent doubling and uh you know i love i, I do like the doublings a lot uh even just like the standard doubling that you're smoking there um i enjoy you know a good straight doubling uh one of my early pipes uh, that i'm uh, that's uh going to stay with me the rest of my life is uh Mountain Batten uh, Dublin and uh, I just uh, it just has a nice feel to it it's nice and chunky but uh, it just is uh, one of my all-time favorite pipes and uh, but the reason why I go with the bent Dublin is that uh, certain there's certain pipe shapes that uh, kind of evoke an image to me and with the bent Dublin you know to me it's a very nautical pipe it's uh, very much uh, the, the kind of pipe that you could see a, a sailor or a sea captain having clenched in their jaw as they uh, mm -hmm. you know, are sailing mm -hmm. the seas and everything. And especially like a quarter, quarter bent uh, one. Uh, I guess you can also kind of fit Zulus in there as well because they're all basically Yeah, yeah, they are doublings. basically the same. Yeah. So, so that kind of uh, style of shape, like I just, uh, I love that shape. It's one of my all-time favorites. And, uh, you know, because I, I just like, uh, you know, with me with pipes, you know, I have a lot of uh, uh, imagery that goes with with them. And uh, it's always it's one that uh, I just like having around. And I also am a big fan of flake pipe tobacco. And flakes are perfect for, you know, the Dublin shape because of the conal. Uh, bowl, bowl size and uh, yeah so it's like uh, my favorite style of pipe tobacco mixed in with uh, one of my all time favorite shapes so I always enjoy just uh, collecting them and adding them to my collection and smoking them mm -hmm. yeah so there you have it our top three pipe shapes now, um, before we wrap up, uh, was there are, are there any shapes that you're just not a fan of? And you can just call out one, or if you don't really have one that comes to mind, that's fine. Um, but I was just interested to see if there was any shape that, like, you, you see that and you're just like, eh, I'll pass. Or you don't feel like you necessarily need to own one for your pipe rack. No, I actually don't have a one that has just said when well, I've been looking at it going, nope, that's not something that I want. 
I don't have one right now. There I have a bunch that will probably never grace my pipe rack because they're just too darned expensive. Oh, for sure. And I just will we'll never own one. Like, just as an example, one of Michael Park's pipes. He makes great looking pipes, but I can't afford his prices. He's established. He... He charges what he charges, and he has every right to charge his pricing. But I'm just your working guy. They're out of my range. What about you? Do you got anything that uh, follows that line? You know, that you just... No, I don't want that. Yes. Um, there's one pipe shape that's actually quite popular. That, uh, for me, I... I mean, I understand the appeal of it, but for me, it's not a pipe that appeals to me, uh, myself. And that is the Devil's Ants. Hmm. I'll have to look that shape up, because I know the Missouri Meerschaum version of those pipes, and basically... One of their shapes is the acorn shape of this bowl mm -hmm. with, uh, I'm not sure if they use the same shank or not. It, it's, if it's a, one of their filtered shanks or one of their, um, non-filtered with, a, I think they use a, the saddle bit yeah, or, or their version of it anyway, because it's basically a nose warmer, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And nose warmers in general, I'm not a big fan of. I mean, like, I own um, this uh, uh, Cobb Nation 2019 Cobb, and it's uh, close to being like a nose warmer. Uh, it's definitely a lot shorter, as you can see, in comparison to yeah. uh, just even, like, uh, for example, like, just, uh, well, it's not too, too short, but uh, I'm just not a fan of, of shorter pipes. Uh, you know, I like uh, six six inches is generally like the my my preferred size of pipe. Um, but the Devil's Hands, I mean, it's not a, a horrible shape, but it's one that is really popular, and it was popularized from um, the um, Hatfields and McCoys uh, TV series that I think Kevin Costner was on, and. Uh, I mean, granted, I have a bit of a family co connection to that story, not personally, but, uh, you know, through through family. But uh, personally, I just, if I'm going to get a pipe, I, I'm going to go with a different shape before I get the hands. And that's, that's just uh, me. Okay. Well, there you have it. Greg doesn't like a popular pipe, and I don't have one that I don't like yet. Pretty much all pipes have made it into my pipe shapes, have made it into my likable category. And that's probably why I have, you know, getting close to 70 pipes. I'm still in fairly young in the pipe smoking hobby. But, but that's not enough. No, it's not. <laughs> if we weren't in at the time of this recording in a bit of a financial situation I'd still be buying pipes I'd have one that I'd have one on the way I'm sure of it because I would have one of the I would have been one of the 50 people who bought the uh, Country Squire 50th anniversary pipe one of 50 and I would also have been in on the matches 860 tribute pipe But, oh well, it's just one of them things, right? For sure. But at least with the matches one, if money, if and when money gets uh, not so tight, I can always buy the shape and the, with the Lucite stem like he always smoked. It won't be the, the tribute pipe, but close enough. Yeah. In spirit, at least. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, yeah, that's uh, that's the episode, everybody. 
And I hope you enjoyed. And if you want to keep following us throughout the week, you can always find me on Twitter or any social media, pretty much, at DRAllen201. If you want to f- keep up with the show and find out when all the re- when the episodes go live on YouTube, and to be honest with you, when you see those notifications go at Twitter, the podcast version has also gone out at the same time. Uh, so you get that information there. And if you want to email us, certainly do so. We're at reverseflashtime at gmail.com for that. Greg, where can the people find you? You can find me on Twitter at the underscore Badger Piper and on Instagram at the Badger Piper. Also, we have a website. It's uh, a really long title. So I'll just leave the link to the description down below. That's the problem with Wix. It's, uh, it's got a really long format. Like, our, if I, if we, I really like in record in recording time. I just made the website last week, so if I remember right, it's syndicatedpipeclub.wixsite.com slash something else. I don't remember what the what la- I just I tried to make it syndicatedpipeclub.wixsite.com, and it wouldn't let me. I had to put something uh, another director to it, which makes no sense to me, but. That's what they require for the free site, so that's what I'm using. Maybe one of these days we'll uh, get the site upgraded to a more professional level so that we can have uh, just a regular old .com. Right. But right now it's just more grassroots. Yeah, absolutely. And, of course, YouTube. You're watching this on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Ring the bell so you can get the notifications directly sent to you without having to rely on us because... Honestly, sometimes I forget. Yes. And uh, leave a comment. Absolutely. We'll definitely check it out. Yeah, at this uh, at this early stage, we've had a couple comments, and uh, I've responded to them. So if you see it come through on a syndicated pipe club, it's probably me on YouTube making the responses. Twitter. Um, Greg has just as much access to the Twitter as I do. I gave him all the stuff, so... That could be either yes. one of us. Yes, I have it on my phone. I haven't tweeted through it yet, but uh, you know, I'll figure out something to do when I'm uh, when I'm doing stuff on it. But uh, thank you to everyone that's followed our channel already, subscribed to us on Twitter, absolutely, and, and everything. You know, we appreciate everyone that's uh, out there supporting us. You know, we we would still do this out of friendship, but. Uh, you know, knowing that there are people out there that are listening to us, uh, you know, talk about our favorite hobbies. You know, we really appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, if it hasn't happened already, help us at least get to the 100 subscriber mark so that we can uh, name the uh, change to the YouTube link. So it ain't that big mess of letters and stuff that come after the YouTube.com slash whatever. So that we can just put syndicated pipe club there at the end and rename the channel so that it's easier to find absolutely so yeah that's our that's our first goal get to the 100 subscribers but anyway as always thanks for watching everybody have some good smokes hopefully hope you have some good entertainment coming up and we will see you next week chat with you later